All right, good evening. I'm out uh, in the yard by my house here. It's very cold. And we're gonna try and capture the Orion Nebula on just a regular mirrorless camera uh, with a telephoto lens, no star tracker, no guiding, nothing, and see what kind of product we can get. So I've just started getting into astrophotography and I've been incrementally working my way into the field of astrophotography, into the hobby. And there's a lot of things that you need to sort of absorb to capture really amazing photos of the night sky. And I thought I'd take you along on that journey with me. So tonight I'm using a lens I've never used. This is my 70 to 350 millimeter Sony lens that's designed for crop sensor cameras like my Alpha 6600. So I'm going to be shooting at 350 millimeters and I'm going to be trying to capture the Orion Nebula. And because I'm shooting at 350, I'm going to use the 500 rule, which is uh, the rule that we use to prevent uh, star trailing. So the further that you're zoomed in on a target, the less time you have to capture it without trailing. So that rule is, is you take 500 divided by your focal length, and that is roughly the amount of time. So if we do 500 divided by 350, and we will get 1.4 seconds or 1.5 seconds. So we'll start there, see what kind of results we get. But sometimes I've, I've been not experimenting and I've nudged that number up a little bit to get a little bit more light, light gathering capability and see if we get reasonable results. Um, Cause an extra half second could be quite a bit in terms of light gathering potential. So I'm gonna walk you through how I get my camera set up and how I locate uh, Orion in the first place. So what I use is a program called Stellarium. You can get it on your cell phones, your smartphones. And what this does is it allows me to see what's in the night sky and you can adjust what you want to see. You can even search for what you want to see. So I could type in Orion or I could not. There we go. Orion Nebula. And it shows me where it's at right there. Hopefully you can see that right there. And then what happens is um, as I point in a few seconds here, it'll go back to free moving, but it'll still have my target circled and I can just rotate that. And the screen actually rotates what you are seeing or should be seeing on the horizon or up in the sky. So Orion's actually really easy to locate in the Eastern sky. Um, it's got, you'll see Orion's belt, those three stars, and then on the sword that drops down, um, you'll see the nebula's right in the middle there. So I'm going to point the camera at the nebula. So then we'll take a series of photos of the nebula, and then we'll, because we're going to do this process called stacking, to help reduce some of the noise, because I'm going to be shooting at a very high ISO. And then we'll take a series of darks, and the darks help the stacking software get rid of the noise that's generated by your camera sensor. Uh, the good thing is it's very, very cold out here. It's well below freezing and that will help uh, reduce the noise from heat on the sensor. So, and one of the things I do recommend is a dew heater. Otherwise you're going to get frost or dew forming on your lenses. You can pick these up on Amazon. They're not very expensive. I've got that run down to a battery bank there on the ground. I can run that off that battery bank for six to eight hours. I set it on medium heat and it heats up the lens and stops frost from forming on there. Okay, so I got the light turned off because I need some uh, my eyes to adjust so I can find the Orion Nebula. Finding it in the view screen is probably one of the more challenging components of astrophotography. The first thing I'll do is just find a bright star on the horizon and focus on it and try and get it as sharp as you can. You don't want it all blown out like that. You want it as tight as a pinpoint as you can get. So right here I got it really set to infinity and that helps to get you focused. Now they actually make these things called Botanov masks, which I'm gonna go to into later in another video. 
that help you get better focus on your stars. Okay, I think I got it right there. Okay, I think that should be the nebula right in the middle there. So first thing I'm going to do is going to make some adjustments here. I'm going to crank up my ISO to the top of the native ISO on this. So that's 32,000. That's super high, but I'm really going for capturing and amplifying as much light as possible. I'm going to make sure that my f-stop is as low as it goes at 6.3, which it is. And then I'm going to adjust the number of seconds the exposure is down to 1.6 that's fine with me we'll try 1.6 if we can get away with it we'll see what happens this is all on manual setting and shooting in raw I highly recommend shooting in raw you'll get a lot more information it's best to use a remote shutter or a built-in intervalometer to take photos but because if you hit the shutter you're going to get a lot of shake on it but you can also just use the timer so i'll just use a two second timer and and now let's review what we got oh yeah you can see the nebula really nice so let's go ahead and zoom in on that it's really very noisy looking and the stars look a little bit out of focus, so I think I'm going to work on focusing on the stars a little bit, but there's definitely a nebula in the camera. So I'll do a little bit of focus adjustment and come back. Okay, so I adjusted. I actually had to come just back from infinity. Let's see what we got there. Let's zoom in. Definitely getting some streaking on the stars. You can see they're not really perfectly round. They're kind of little ovals streaking away. But you can definitely see the nebula there. It's kind of blown out on my camera here, but it looks better on the on the camera screen, but on the cell phone it doesn't look so great. So I'm actually gonna adjust down the exposure to 1.3. And just see what happens. See if we get a little bit sharper. And how much that costs us in terms of light. And that is better. They're still a little streaky at 1.3. But a lot better. I'm going to recenter the nebula here in the middle of the viewfinder. And we're going to take a series of photographs. Okay, so I've got it recentered. I'm going to use the built-in... Intervalometer, which basically just lets me do hands free shooting. Um, so I'm going to have it start three seconds after I start it. And since I'm shooting every 1.3 seconds, um, I'm going to give a three second gap between shots. And then I want 40 shots. Uh, I'm going to stack. All right, so we'll move interval shooting to on. Close the menu. All right, now as soon as I start this thing up, it's going to start taking photographs. One, two, three, first shot. And it's going to now keep shooting and get those 40 shots for me. So I'm just going to let it do its thing. Okay, so I'm done shooting my... 40 shots of the nebula. I'm going to just kind of review them. You can see the nebula will move across the sky. You can see some clearly some images have more noise than others, kind of a reddish hue. Seems to be a common thing on my Sony. Is that the purple hue? So now we need to take the the darks which the darks are basically going to help us subtract some of that n reddish noise you're seeing there. You'll see how they vary quite a bit. Like that one's a very noisy image. Um, so we'll do that by putting the lens cap on the camera and just running the exact same series of photos with the same shutter speed, same ISO, same everything. 
Um, but all we do is we just put the lens cap on. And you want to do this while you're out there just as you're finishing up um, because you want it to be the same temperature too because there's a lot of that noise can be caused by the temperature on your sensor. So just going to throw the lens cap on and do the same thing. So now that camera is taking the darks. Once it finishes doing that, we're going to go inside where it's nice and warm. And we're going to download our 40 lights. So lights are, are what we call our photographs with the stars or nebula in them. And we're going to take our 40 darks and we're going to put them into a program called Starry Sky Stacker, which is what I use for Macs. But they also have Deep Sky Stacker, which is a free software for Windows programs, which operates basically the same. And I'll put links to both of those in the description below. Got all of our photos uh, loaded up in this file here that I've got Orion and I've got my 40 darks and 40 lights all in here. It's always good to organize this stuff so you can find it easily. And then you're going to go and launch your stacker program. I'm using Starry Sky Stacker. And you want to navigate to the correct folder. So here's my original Orion photos and just need to select all of these. So I hit Command A or whatever shortcut you have and open them. Now just use all the default uh, settings here. There's no need to change anything. And it will upload the 80 images. Now I always take 40 lights because I'm really hoping to at least get 30 usable light frames. And depending on how fast of a computer you have, this can take quite a while. Um, or if you have a fast computer like I do, it only takes a few minutes. And it'll give me a warning telling me that it's going to change the white balance, which is fine. And it will start aligning those 40 light images and uh, trying to line up the stars. And usually, especially when I am using untracked uh, sky images like this, I'm going to lose a fraction of the photos. They're just not going to be usable. Okay, so it's finished. I got 28 uh, stackable images. Okay, so I got 28 stackable images here. Here you can see individual frames right here. And it's cut out the 12 photos here that were of lower quality. So you can look at those lower quality photos and see. Um, you can see there's a lot of noise on these ones, which is probably why the program opted to cut those out. You can manually bring those back in um, by adjusting this bar here. But I'm looking for that higher quality images, so I'll probably go down to the top 25 images and start looking at the, some examples of those. You can see the color here is a lot better, a lot of that, a lot less of that red sensor color. So I'm pretty happy with that. So I'm going to go ahead and composite these 25 images by hitting the composite button here. So there's the image. Now you can see when you combine them all, it actually looks a lot better already. Uh, so the next step is to determine which um, TIFF. So it's going to export this as a TIFF for us to edit in Photoshop or whatever photo editing program you use. You can use dark median, which is a little bit darker here, median, which is a little more gray, and mean. I usually end up with either mean or median. And I kind of like the neutral gray color that the mean has. You can also look at max, which is going to be really noisy. You can see all the little meteors and satellites and stuff I caught. And min is going to be very dark. So I think I'm going to go with mean. I'll go ahead and save that current image to the folder. So I'll just put Orion mean and save it. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and open up uh, Photoshop. So that is going to be the program I'm going to edit in. 
and I'm going to load that TIFF in there. There's the Orion mean TIFF. Okay, so now we're going to start working in this. Um, I will be using a lot of the ad standard adjustments over here. Um, but the first thing I want to do is sort of just make some broad scale adjustments. So I'm going to go up to filter and go to camera raw filter. And here I'm going to start adjusting temperature and tint. So see here it kind of goes back to the red, but if I push it that way a little bit, it goes a little too blue. I'm sort of looking for that neutral gray background. So there, and then I can pull the tint up a little bit to kind of bring out some of the pinks and roses in that nebula. So I'm going a little bit more towards the magenta side there. I can adjust exposure, but that doesn't seem like it really needs much. Contrast, now contrast gives you that really nice dark sky, but you don't really want to go for a black night sky yet. Um, so I'm just going to leave that where it is. Highlights, you can bring those up to bring out some of the clouds in the nebula. But you don't want to go so far that you blow out those stars right in the heart of Orion. So you can see here, this is the Orion Nebula here. This is the Flame Nebula, and you can faintly make out the Running Man Nebula there. So shadows. A little bit of adjusting. Maybe bring it up just a bit. Whites. Whites, you can blow out the image really fast. But what the interesting thing is, is if you bring up the whites, you don't really gain much in the clouds. But if you pull the whites down, you can really see the stars crisp up a little bit in the inside. So I'll pull that down. Blacks. Uh, I'm not going to mess with the black too much. Now, I don't mess with texture or clarity until my last step, but I do want to pull the saturation up and bring out some of the color. You can definitely start to pick up some of the blues and such in there. Go ahead and close that out. The next thing you want to check is your detail. Just make sure that there's no sharpening on this because that'll just make it even grainier. And I'm not going to worry about noise reduction. I mean, you can make it look like it's a watercolor painting by pulling that all the way over, which I don't want to do at this point. So I'm just going to leave that be at the moment. OK, so then we'll press OK. That takes us back into editing mode. And the first thing I'm going to do is adjust the levels. So. Level adjustment here, we can move the this, this sliders here, left or right. So a lot of that reddish pink noise I'm getting can be eliminated by just moving the black scale here over just a little bit to darken it up. You don't want to go too far to lose details on the nebula, but just pulling it over makes it a little bit darker. And you can adjust the midpoint as well, just a little bit. And I generally leave this end alone because I don't want to pull out, make it too much brighter. Now the nice thing about adjusting it and where we have these layers, is you can turn this off and kind of see what improvements you made. And sometimes I'll go through all these adjustments and I'll be like, man, I didn't. it actually turns out worse. So you can always just delete it right here if you need to. Next we're going to do curves. Now curves is one of my favorite ways to edit astrophotography photos. And there are two or three features I really use here. You know, you can try and manually do all this in here, adding points. But my favorite is this little hand tool right here. So if you select that, then you just click anywhere in here. So if I click into this dark areas that I want to be dark, I can just pull down and it'll make it darker. Then I can go into the light areas and pull up to make them brighter. So like I know there's some, I can pick up some faint clouds here. Maybe I can pull those up. I 
and that helps bring out some of that detail in there. You can also zoom in if you want to like click on a star and reduce how bright a star is you can always click on there and drag down So I like where that's going. So what I'm going to do is actually go back and add another curves layer. Now you can either use these two tools. There's one that um, sets the black point and one that samples the gray point. So basically, it'll whatever point you click on, it'll use that as its base point. I'm going to use the gray point uh, here. And then I can just start clicking in areas and space that I want to be sort of a neutral gray. And I'll just move around until I get a really nice result like this. And that's kind of what I'm looking for. Um, I mean, I can keep clicking around and it'll change depending on where I click. But that result looks really good to me. That's kind of what I'm looking for. I'm getting some of the detail in the nebula here. So I'm pretty happy with that. And you can, like I said, turn off the effect over here or another thing you can do is change the opacity of that layer so you can if you're looking for some sort of impact in between you can just adjust that there on that bar right, we're going to start working up a little bit closer here so one of the things i want to do is go ahead and just crop uh, some of this edge out there's a lot of noise on the edge here make sure you do not have the delete cropped pixels because you can't go back and readjust afterwards if this is clicked it'll actually delete the data so what I'm going to do is keep adjusting this. I like that right there. I'm going to hit that check mark. Okay, that's looking better. And I can see some faint clouds here. I really want to try and bring those out. So what I'm going to use is this selective color tool here. Now, the three colors that are mainly in play here are the cyans, blues, and magentas, but it depends on what your target is. So I'm going to start with the cyans and start adjusting. I definitely want to bring out some of the blue in the heart of the nebula, but don't want to lose all the pink. And this is really personal preference. You're just trying to bring out certain features of the nebula. All right, let's do, we'll move on to the blues. So you can really give the nebula a strong pink feel, um, but I still like to have, have some of that blue play through. Again, I'm always trying to check, like, what does it look like before, without it, with it. I've just really just pushed the nebula a little bit brighter and lighter. And I've lost some of that blue, so I kind of want to make sure I don't lose too much of the blue. So I'm going to pull a little bit back in. Look at the magentas. really like that. We're starting to pick up a little bit more out here on the fainter edge. I feel like that's a nice improvement. We've got a little bit of red coloration here um, from pushing those colors. So what we can do is actually create a mask. So what, or I really just want to impact the area where I have some nebulosity. So I can go over here, grab my brush, make sure it's selected black, and I'm gonna increase my brush size. And now I'm just gonna start painting where the nebula is.
Okay, then what I want to do is make sure that this is selected here and go and hit invert. You can see now the colors aren't as impacted out here, but it's really just focused here. But I don't want to have this distinct uh, lines here. You can tell where I have my mask. So we can apply a blur. So let's try a Gaussian blur. And just press OK. And there you go. You see it helped it blur that out a little bit. And then I can also adjust the opacity so that, you see, I don't want that red hue out here. So I'll pull back that opacity a little bit. There we go. Yeah, I think that's a nice improvement. We've picked up some more of that nebulosity right there. All right, let's go back to our adjustments tab. And I think I want to go ahead and tweak with the, uh, try tweaking with um, the curves again, just to see if we can get a little more of this nebulosity brought out here. A little bit brighter. That looks good. Okay, that's looking really good. I'm, I like where this looks. I can get some nebulosity here, the Running Man Nebula. The Flame Nebula looks really nice. Now what I want to do is be able to go back and edit it in the raw filter. So I have to push a lot of buttons here. I have to push, so I got to push Command, Option, Shift, E, and that creates another TIFF layer here with all of the edits that we had applied here. I'm gonna go back to filter and do camera raw filter. Now it's time to revisit all of those things before. So I can adjust the color, temperature, I'm trying to keep this relatively neutral gray black. See, I might pull up the exposure just a touch and I start to get a little bit more nebulosity out here. But I get a little bit more red here, so I might see if I can adjust that with temperature. Yeah, that's not too bad. Um, I'll probably be able to pull that down a little darker with the black slider here. There we go. Maybe make the center of the nebula a little more illuminated with highlights. Might pull the shadows up just a touch. Now clarity can help bring out some of those details in the clouds. You can see that there. So I'll go ahead and pull that up. You can really bring it really bright, but it tends to get kind of a really textured feel. But we can also pull down that texture effect by sliding this down or alternatively we can go down to detail and do a little bit of noise reduction which tends to give a little softer feel so usually I'm not going to go above 15 on that let's go back to that and uh, play around with texture just to soften that up now you can really see we got some really nice nebulosity here. The Flame Nebula and Running Man. You can just see the legs on Running Man there. And let's go ahead and play with saturation a little bit. Don't want to go too much. That's looking really good. I'm really happy with that. We're just using a standard telephoto lens. No star tracker, no equatorial mount, nothing. That is a very nice photo. So I'm going to go ahead and export this, uh, but make sure before you do that, go to mode, make sure it's in 8 bits because that's what JPEGs are in. And I'm going to go ahead and export as a JPEG, good quality. Make sure it goes to sRGB. I'll put Orion final. Now you can always leave that open and save it in your Photoshop file and come back and visit it later um, and try a different take at it. But I'm really pleased with how well that turned out. Oops, I'm not gonna close that just yet. So there we go, there's our image. I think it looks really nice. 
And if you shrink this down to how most people are going to, if you share this on social media or whatnot, um, yeah, most people are going to be looking at it on a cell phone with a screen that's quite a bit smaller than what this image is at right now, something like that. That looks very nice. I mean, that's going to come out great. And it's super impressive for just basically a little over one second exposures all stacked. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's video, and uh, I'll put links to all of the software I talked about below, as well as the camera equipment I used. And I look forward to sharing my journey into astrophotography with you as I go along. And I would love to hear from you on your attempts on trying to capture the Orion Nebula this winter. Winter is a great time to photograph this nebula since it's high in the sky most of the night. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.